All right. Hello, everyone. I am here with Neil, better known as BFG Neil in the Discord community. Um, Neil, you have been a member of the Helium Discord, like the Helium community, I guess, probably since longer than I've worked here, you know, but um, yeah. I don't know that every, everyone probably knows you as BFG Neil, but I don't know that they know, you know, much about you as a business owner, an IoT business mm -hmm. owner. So that's what we're here to talk about a little bit today. So can you kind of give us a little intro into your business called Trackpack and your role there and kind of how you guys got started? Sure. So yeah, as you said, my name is Neil Scogland, I'm better known as BFG Neil. I've been in the Helium community for just over two years now, I think. So right. I was in around 7,000 hotspots, but I'm also a community moderator as well. So, you know, most people have known of me and heard of me before in the past. So um, <laughs> my background as such is, you know, I love networking. I love um, technical playing around with small devices and Helium just brings everything about that into one package for me that I can build a solution from. And that's what we're doing now with Trackpack. This is me, um, you know, taking what I've learned over the last couple of years and putting it into a real world business. All right. Um, All right. Very cool. Oh, sorry, did I interrupt you? No. All right. I was just going to say, can you give a little TLDR of Trackpack itself? You know, what is Trackpack? What do you guys do? What solutions are you kind of providing for your customers? Sure. So TrackPack is an asset tracking system that allows you to add trackers in a very quick way to the Helium network. Um, currently, when you add a device to the network, you have to add it to the console. You have to add the device's decoder. You have to then create an integration and set that integration up. But with us and our app, you literally just scan a QR code and get going. So it really simplifies that process of using the network. Um, there's some additional features on top of that that make it really, really usable, like being able to set um, geolocations. So you can set a geofence area, and when your when your tracker leaves or enters that ex that area, it gets a push notification directly to your phone to let you know that it's moved. So that can be great for um, you know knowing that um, something's left the building, for example, that it shouldn't, or that you know that object has arrived onto site, and that's what we're finding our customers are using it before. It's generally not to find lost and stolen items, but to know that items have arrived and what kind of usage they're getting in the day. So it's it's very interesting. And um, we've got some great upcoming features as well, um, like um, being able to, to, to track assets with the system. So that means that you can create an asset, assign a tracker to it, and then create a public link to share. So if you're okay. a small delivery company and you want to you know, utilize this technology to give that Uber delivery kind of experience to your customers, you could do that very simply with this system and integrate it so you could just literally provide them a public link to watch that delivery in real time. Um, yeah, we've also, no, that, so. that's really cool. That, that's very cool. Sorry, I know I kind of interrupted you there. Do, can you, you know, while you're talking about these, can you give some specific examples of like some use cases, you know, that are mm -hmm. doing types of things like you know there's some company down the street who's using it for blah 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 anything like that yeah so right now there's um bailey and jones we did a great case study video on them so you can see that on our youtube if you want to see it uh, they're using it to track po orders as well as um vans that they own and making sure that they go to site and things arrive to clients sites uh, gotcha. a friend of mine told me a really great story once of um you know a, a contractor was contracted to get rid of waste from a site they never actually made it to the dump and they were just dumping it in the middle of nowhere and then charging the full <laughs> amount of money for it. So systems like this allow that kind of company to really track where their assets are and are they going where they say they are. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Um, I love hearing this. And I like the the fact that, you know, because you're making it so simple for people that people without like a specific IoT background or something can just, mm -hmm. you know, start using trackback right away and they don't have to have all that background knowledge or anything like that. So that definitely um, makes it exactly. simple. Going. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, um, that's the big thing. I mean, when we introduce people to this network, it's, it's about getting a sensor in their hand. And, you know, if you can, if you can pop something like a tab in their hand and say to them, look, all you do is scan that QR code and you can get going with this device it's fantastic. It opens up a world to them and they start realizing, wow, I can track this with it. I can monitor this with it. It's that opportunity that they find that they didn't know existed. You know, and that, that all happens by getting a tracker in their hand and allowing sure. them to onboard it in a very easy way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it brings awareness to like IoT, LoRaWAN, all that type of stuff mm -hmm. too. I mean, if people don't even know this technology exists and then you guys are here making it simple for them and showing them, hey, this can be really helpful for you. Um, 
That's awesome. Um, what made you guys, and I know you and I have talked about this offline before, mm. but you know, what made you choose helium? I don't think you were kind of going around looking at other technologies in the past. I think you immediately landed on helium, but what kind of, you know, what stands out about helium to you and makes it the perfect fit for trackback? For me, I had a different like angle when I come to this network. You know, I, I was here because I love the technology um, and the fact that it could change people's lives in a very, very powerful way. You know, having sensor data like this can mean that people work less, work smarter. It can <laughs> save lives. And that's yeah. what excited me about it, you know. So I went all in and, and looked at, you know, what I can do with it and then then realized, you know, very quickly right at the start i launched a website called helium status it was needed for hotspot owners to understand their installations and actually improve their earnings quite a bit so yeah. that was my first view into the network and using it but i'd always had this desire to build something on it um when that's that system shut down because obviously the the gateways changed you didn't need to port forward anymore we yeah. looked at that, that the network at that point and thought what is the best way that we can further this network and grow this network and that's why we come up with track pack. You know, I went away and did a proof of concept um, very, very quickly with, you know, just some basic tools, which anyone could do. Once you realize there's a niche and a, and a, and a, a real product there, we then went and developed it into a full system that you see today. And that, that process has taken roughly about five to six months, um, which is a very, very fast, fast turnaround, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I love it. You're a true believer right from the get go. That's that's what we love to hear. But, you know, this is exactly an example of kind of what we've wanted from the Helium network from the get go mm -hmm. is community members coming in and, you know, seeing, hey, I can develop these solutions on here that can help people out that can, you know, streamline businesses and things like that. So I think Trackback itself, a perfect example of, you know, exactly the mission of the Helium network from, you know, from the beginning. Um, sure. And we, we yeah. want to take that to the next stage as well. I mean, part of what we do is white label. So, you know, we can walk into an industry and say, here's trackers, use it. But if it yeah. doesn't solve a business problem for them and I don't have that insight, um, it's, it's worthless to them. So we offer full white labeled experience, which means that you as an industry insider with the knowledge of that industry and can go into that industry and say, right, we need this particular tracker and it's installed here. You can create all of that support to material and just use our systems so you wouldn't have to create anything. So yeah. often we find people are coming to us to, to us to track things like scooters or bikes or and they're creating their own white label website and earning money from launching that business. You know, you've got the maintenance, the sales, the installation, the customer queries, all of that is chargeable yeah. work. So you can really, really grow this network yourself in your area with your knowledge. And that's that's a big thing about what we want to do. At the moment, we have something like five white label partners, but we have about 10 in development. So you should see our name more and more you stay for the next year or so. <laughs> Absolutely. We love to see that. And we, you know, we're going to get the word out a little bit more too as we move forward. Um, I know you're based in the UK. Do you have... Um, you know, are you, is Trackback being used mainly in UK and Europe? Is it all over the world? Are there expansion plans right now? I mean, I know you said you had partners in development and things like that. So what, what does the future look like for, you know, for expansion, I guess? Sure. We're truly worldwide. I mean, we've got trackers in North and South America, the UK, all across Europe. We've got um, an emerging market in Australia that starts to use them. Uh, there's a few in China, uh, awesome. there's a few in Africa. Trinidad and Tobago is another one off the top of my head. Um, wow. But it is truly worldwide. So we're trying to grow that usage everywhere. Um, and we, we've got lofty goals. You know, I want to see a million sensors on board next year <laughs> from track. I want to see that. You know, yeah. everyone wants to see that, right? But yeah. we're starting to see the inquiries that mean that we can do those sort of numbers, which is amazing. And it's just been such a fun journey that I want everyone to come on the journey with us too, that wants to do tracking, you know? Yeah, oh, man, it's a very impassioned elevator pitch. I love it. Um, do you have any, you know, I know you guys are, you know, ramping up with partners and things like that. Are there any major partners that you can kind of name drop that, are, that you're working with or that you're in talks with or anything that you have stuff going on with right now? Yes. So the biggest name that we've got right now is uh, Brompton Bikes. So Brompton Bikes make these great fold-up bikes. There's, there's one on my next to my desk there. Yeah. And the great little devices that are commuter bikes, really. So they stay within central London and major metropolitan areas. But it's kind of that solution for you to be able to ride to the train and then get off the train at your destination and ride to work with it. So the very short journeys. But 
Brompton, um, Brompton have got this mobility trial, mobility hub trial, um, a scheme out there at the moment run by Brompton and, and Enterprise Cars at the Imperial College of London. So this okay. is a pilot research program to basically say, please leave your car at home, use our bikes, use our electric vehicles around the campus and traveling around the campus. And what yeah. they're interested in there is, again, not the stolen bike, not the stolen car. It's where are those bikes used in that period, you know? Where where would it best be for them to put another mobility hub? Or, you know, are they getting the uses that they see? And um, this is coming together with the rental department as well, because Brompton have got these lockers all over London. So I think there's something like 40 lockers with eight bikes in them each. And what they okay. want to do is they want to install trackers on it to show where best to plan for the future of where these bikes are being used for better locker placements, um, which is just fantastic. So the, the, the initial, they've been live with us for a couple of weeks now. Um, a couple of months now, sorry. And um, this new trial with the um, Mobility Hub is going live in a week or so's time. So we'll start having some video to put up and show off this trial. But the, the longer term goal here is to try and get a tracker on every Brompton bike. That No, I, I know from talking with you, this is super exciting for you. I mean, I think for us as well to see this. So that's really cool. And it also has that angle, you know, that I've talked about before of just not only helping that business, but also helping the planet. You know, you're saying leaving the car mm -hmm. at home, use the electric vehicles, use the bikes, things like that. And so, you know, that's exactly what we're trying to do with Helium is, you know, help these businesses help the planet too. And so I, that's a perfect mm -hmm. example. Exactly. Yeah. Super excited exactly. to see how this progresses. Yeah. And Brompton, companies like Brompton have been trying to do this for a really long time, you know. So they, they when they spoke to us, they've been trying to do it for six years. They oh, wow. wanted this kind of information, but the, the power usage of cellular and um, the size of the cellular trackers was just too big. So it's been a real eye opener for us that we can we can provide this technology very cheaply, whereas before they would have had to put a lot more money into you know development. And, and, and the, often some of the, the companies that trialed for them, they would have had to install the gateways as well, whereas Helium yeah. just brings them such a low barrier to entry of just buying the trackers, just paying for the service. There's none of that maintenance and setup needed. It's just just open doors for them. They, they, they have a futurist at uh, Brompton, and they're very excited <laughs> to be working with this information finally. Um, and yeah. They also do a lot of work with councils, so councils can start saying how many bike hours are used in a month. You know, how, where are the best places to be, put more lockers in and, and be greener and be more promoting of green technology? So it's just amazing. Yeah, no, it's great, and I mean, I know you know, having been in Europe quite a bit, you know, I mean, bikes are a thing in Europe more than in the US, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, just getting around like Amsterdam, Paris, all that stuff. So like, you know, I can see this definitely moving across from the UK, all over Europe, all over the world. And, you know, very sure. cool to see that. So yeah, excited. Um, you kind of mentioned the goal is 1 million sensors out mm -hmm. there. You know, or Do you have, you know, kind of ballpark, how many, you know, sensors you guys have out there, how many are in line to sure. come online soon or anything like that? You know, any big numbers you can, you know, wow us with? Sure. So in, in reality, we've only been live for roughly about two and a half months now. Yeah. Um, we've hit just shy of 500 onboarded trackers, 300 okay. registered users. Um, and those users have been sent over 20,000 alerts for leaving geofences and 1.1 million location updates. So awesome. this isn't one for one of DC usage. We're we're at around six million in DC usage. Um, yeah. In testing, we've done another ten as well, ten million DC usage. But in the next year or so, the projects like Brompton Rentals will add thousands at a time to the network. So the difference is, is those kind of deals take six months to seven months to you know work through the the the, the, the fine details of them. Yeah. Um, and another big part of what we're doing now is creating our own hardware as well. So, you know, that bike is tiny. Um, fitting a digital matter oyster on it is never going to work. So yeah. that's the next <laughs> step for us is creating the hardware to enable these, these lifestyle installations, we call them, you know. Um, it's not so much business. It's rather, you know, users using the network, you know, putting these on bikes, putting them on pets, putting them in bags, putting them in, you know, that's really going to start to see the growth before we see that major adoption, I feel. For sure. And you mentioned pets too. I mean, pet tracking is a huge mm -hmm. 
need for people, you know, and there have been mm-hmm. some companies who have kind of developed some solutions, but, you know, maybe you haven't gotten off the ground or are still in production. So, I mean, if you guys develop a pet tracking thing, I have two cats right here. I'd love to track, you know, all the time. I want to know where they're at all the time. So yeah. Um, excited to see that. So last thing I have for you, just, you know, you've kind of talked about like the million sensors, what you're doing with Brompton, anything, but are there big things, you know, you guys have going on maybe in the next month or two that you can kind of tease or that people can look out for, they can follow you on social and kind of see some updates and stuff like that. Yeah. As, as I alluded to a minute ago, we, we, we're doing new hardware. So if anyone wants to come and see it or talk about it with us, um, we've just set up a brand new discord server. So people can come on there and, and talk with us about hardware, see what we're doing. And there is going to be, you know, at least two versions. One is a bike tracker and one is a pet tracker. So okay. you'll see those revisions coming through very, very soon. And we've partnered with with Rack to produce them as well. So it's a very, very trusted brand to get this yeah. out there. Um, yeah. We think it's going to do fantastically well. I'm always reminded the first video, video I ever saw from Helium, there was a lost dog in it, but there's still no <laughs> dog collars. You know, So I yeah. want to hit that market because I think that is key for us getting out there. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Um, Okay, Neil. Well, thank you so much. This has been great. And I'm going to have you you send me links to like your Discord server, your socials, everything like that. So I'll put them in the video description for this and people can follow you, reach out. I mean, what's what's the best way if someone, you know, wants to learn more about Trackback, what's the best way to reach out to you? Is it via Discord, socials, Trackback email? Which one? Yeah, I always say um, say to my business partner that that Discord is totally Web three, you know, Web two's email. So if people want to come yeah. and talk to me, and I mean literally talk to me, I'm on Discord all day. Okay, all right, BFG Neil uh, on Discord. That's and the one. You on there? All right, all right. I'm everywhere perfect. by that name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I see you all the time. Um, perfect, and you know, stay tuned, everybody, for more exciting stuff from Trackback. I know we've got stuff in the works going on, and um, there'll be stuff coming out from Neil and his team very soon. So, thanks again, Neil. Appreciate it, and we'll talk soon. No worries. Thanks. Thanks for the time. Absolutely.